free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Many have the wrong ideas about what freedom means. To understand what freedom means, we must ask the one who gave it originally. God gave freedom to the first humans, Adam and Eve, but gave only restrictions that would endanger the preservation of that freedom. That reservation was based on an eternal law that governed the universe and required obedience to the creator of all. This law is a reflection of God's character and ensures there is law and order in the universe. Some say, if only I could fly like Superman, I would be free. If only I had superpowers, I would be a slave to nobody or nothing. But unrestricted liberty leads to the slavery of our own selves and of others. Angels fly and have superpowers, but it doesn't make them free if they dedicate their powers to self-pleasing disregarding the laws of love and order of the universe instituted by Jehovah. Satan is an embodiment of all self-pleasing since it does whatever he wants. But doing whatever we please is a freedom that is self-defeating for we become slaves of our own desires, however unreasonable and wicked they may be. The Bible reveals this in the experience of Lucifer, a once holy and highly exalted angel in heaven. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which deeds weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. The ambition of Lucifer to be like God had nothing to do with reflecting his character, for he already did at a time. It had to do with a false conception of God-likeness, the desire to be free from being responsible and from obedience to God's commands. This is the same rebellion he has instigated in the minds of humans for ages, who believe unrestricted liberty constitutes true freedom. The desire to be like God, but not in holiness. The desire is reputation, but not his character. The more this supposed freedom is indulged, the more evil this war will become. The Holy Spirit, the third divine person of the Godhead, plays a pivotal role in guiding believers. Its primary functions encompass illuminating the truth, convicting individuals of their sins, and foretelling impending judgment. In our current era, the Holy Spirit's presence is increasingly indispensable. Success for an individual, nation, or country hinges upon embracing the Spirit's influence wholeheartedly. Genuine liberty is achieved when one yields to the constant guidance of the Holy Spirit. In essence, recognizing the Holy Spirit's importance in our lives is paramount as it serves as a compass leading us towards righteousness reminding us of our shortcomings and offering insight into the consequences of our actions. Embracing the divine guidance is the key to achieving profound spiritual and societal fulfillment. What freedom, what liberty we may experience through the Holy Spirit.
Satan's rebellion in heaven, the first record of sin in the universe, took a new turn. Deception. Like a political opponent of Christ, he battled to have the allegiance of other angels lower in rank than himself. The Bible relates the following, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And a great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. In the pursuit of unrestricted liberty, Satan took on the character of a dragon and a serpent, that he is a murderer and a deceiver. And so are his protégés, whether fellow angels or humans.